Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, you guys, this is my review recap for Love After Lockup. Love during lockup, okay? Secret prison weddings, y'all. We got some people trying to plan some weddings. We got black rings, black dresses. I think we trying to plan a damn funeral and not a wedding at this point. And some of these people, child, listen, I don't think there's any brains up there, okay? Knock, 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 knock. Nobody's home. It's hollow. We can hear an echo because there's no way that you are thinking and you are literally got people that are stuck in the past trying to get back to dad going high school child. They visit in high schools. They visit in old houses that nobody don't even live in there no more. You know, we were putting our kids in daggone jeopardy of things. We lying. We keeping secrets. We getting engaged to two different daggone people. And at the same time, we got whole last names being written on our stomachs. I'm getting a headache <laughs> just thinking about it, child. What is going on? This is Love During Lockup, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into it, all right? So we are going to start out with Justine and Michael. At this point, of course, we know that Justine, you know, mom and her boys know about this. And she is supposed to be on her way to go ahead and meet his family for this dinner and finally tell them about these plans. Now, she's asking them their opinion and her son is in the back talking about, you know, I wouldn't tell them anything. I would just keep it from them. And she's like, uh, you know, thanks for the advice. So you would just lie about it, you know. And of course, she just wants her mom and all of them to be supportive and, you know, come in there with her, even though her mother thinks that she's making a mistake with this, too, to be quite honest. You know, they get in there, they get seated, and, you know, the, his family comes in not long after. Child, she got his pitch up on the table to her, right, at the head of the table, <laughs> so that he can be a part of this dinner. And she was just saying that, you know, she's crazy nervous, she don't know what they're going to say, how they're going to feel, and, you know, of course, she doesn't want this to drive a wedge in between them you know his mom is getting to meet all of them they doing the introductions as they come in and she go ahead and is about to make this toast and then it's like oops saved by the bell because michael calls right at that time you know she was trying to make small talk you know talk at first and say how was y'all guys right over from the hotel and she's like well you know i got something that i wanted to talk to y'all about they like you know do you want this picture and she's like, oh, yeah, you could bring him over here to me, okay? I want him close to me all the time. You know, the sister's like, are you excited about the visit tomorrow? She's like, very, can't wait, okay? And so she gets right to business and basically was about to make this toast. He calls, so she's like, oh, you're right on time. I'm going to put you on speaker because I just was about to let your family know, you know, what was going on. And this way, you are on the phone with me and we can tell them together. She was like, you know go ahead they could hear you you on speaker and so he basically lets them know like you know because she let him know i'm standing up i was just about to give a toast so he's like okay and she's like do you want to say anything first before i start so he's like well good evening everyone you know thank you for coming glad to have you here glad to know that everybody made it and he's like me and justine are getting married tomorrow and his mother's like what huh did you hear him come again She's in complete shock and, you know, the sister smiling, saying him and Justine are getting married tomorrow. And she's like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. She was like, so you getting mar married tomorrow? And Justine's like, yeah. She's like, oh, my God, okay. So she asked to be excused, you know. Um, the daughter was letting her know, like, mommy, you're going to be there. And she walks away. I was kind of surprised at the mother's reaction, to be quite honest. I, I really more so expected that from... um you know, the sister, since she was the one that was kind of being defensive and saying how close her and her brother relationship is and how, you know, Justine would need to make a relationship with her. Whereas mommy was over here saying she wanted him to grow up. She wanted to know whether he was going to be committed or not, because previous to this, he had been such a big ladies man. So if anything, I kind of thought mommy reaction would have been like, hey, you know, I did this matchmaker. I'm good at it. OK, obviously, he really loves this girl if he's ready to marry her. But that's not what mommy was was given so she gets up and walks out or whatever and michael's sister is just saying that she's hurt she's disappointed she's like why didn't you tell me you know at this point his mother comes back to the table his mother's asking the same thing why didn't you tell me and he's saying to both of them pretty much he one he ain't gonna be questioned by nobody okay and two he wanted
wanted it to be a surprise, so he asked Justine not to tell them. And his mom is saying, like, this is actually kind of uncomfortable for her, right? And then she gets up and she's asking Justine's mom, you know, what's going on, how she's feeling. You know, they get to talking. And Justine's mom was basically like, I feel like they moving too fast. I feel like they could have waited till they got out, you know, till he got out. He don't have that much longer. And they could have tried to see where they were going from there once he got out, you know. And Justine is saying that the last thing she wanted to do was get them upset, have them mad at her, drive a wedge. At this point, she starts crying and she's like, she don't want everything, you know, to be messed up. They was trying to pass the phone to his daughter, but um, basically his time ended up running out and he had to get off the phone. And his sister was saying that all of this could have been avoided had, you know, she just been honest or whatever the case may be. It would not have to be any tears at all. So I said, yeah, they doing all of this, but I'm assuming the wedding is still going to go on anyway, right? I guess they will get over it. <laughs> Child, as we move along, we get to damn Ty and Hottie. She driving in the car. She's saying how she been planning her wedding her whole life. You know, she's a miss that she's still talking to all the inmates that she was already talking to, but she didn't add any more new ones on. So for her, that is basically being faithful, okay? That means that she is being real faithful and that, you know, since she got engaged she hasn't added anybody new to the roster so you know she's doing good she's leaving it all out for Heidi okay and so when she gets to the store she's basically meeting up with her friend Brittany and she says that Brittany is basically you know a Debbie Downer okay she always downing her but I said is it that she's really downing you or is it that she's telling you the truth and it's the truth that you don't want to hear okay all these people up here seem to get mad at their friends telling the truth. But I'm here for all the friends that's mostly up here this season, y'all. Because they're keeping it real. They're not holding nothing back. And they letting them know, like, do you want to do this? You know, when she come in and first show her the ring, she was like, oh, that's beautiful. But the minute she told her that this came from Heidi, her friend was like, uh, what? And why are we doing that? You know, when is this supposed to be happening or whatever, right? So she's looking for a wedding dress. And she's saying she want rhinestones, long sleeves, she wanted to be sexy, she wanted to be cute, or whatever the case may be. You know, her friend is like, why not just a jumpsuit, okay? That was the same thing that Justine mom said to her. But she says that her dream wedding her entire life has to be been this candlelit type of wedding that's at nighttime and it's in a mansion. I said, girl, you can't possibly be thinking you get in a damn mansion when you over here dating prisoners, I'm just saying. So she was like, you know, instead they are having this cafeteria wedding. Now, mind you, it's one black dress in the middle of all of these. And she's like, actually, I'm a mortician. So I kind of like the idea of a black dress. And, you know, basically her friend is like, um, I wasn't being serious. That was a joke. OK, because she has suggested it. So the lady told her she'll pick a couple of different ones and she'll bring them around to her so that she could just go ahead and try all them on. And she's like, thank you. And she's like, you know, what time frame are we looking at? She said, well, we already got improved. So I would say that it would probably be within the next 30 days. So her friend is like, you know, why would you do that? What is the rush? Why would you be seriously thinking about, you know, marrying this man like this? And she's talking about she want to feel like a princess. This is her dream. She's like, no, but you're rushing 30 days, really? And Heidi is, I mean, Ty is basically like, you know, I want to be recognized, you know, and like the sunshine. And her friend is still saying, yeah, girl, but 30 days is really fast. You don't even have time to think about it. You know, according to Ty, she don't need to ponder about this. This is her man and this is happening so she needs to dress and that's that on that you know and she was like her and Heidi have made this decision they feel happy they feel secure I said are you sure about that girl like are we really sure so here she come walking out and that black dress it did absolutely nothing for her okay her friend basically was like okay Morticia and the next thing you know she started crying and she was like are you crying she was like yeah I'm just ready to go home at this point so she was like girl it's just a dress what's happening right now she wanted to tell her look at my arms I look crazy you know what I'm saying they look Look horrendous and all of this and she looked humongous she was like no you don't you know of course they could always tell it to you she was like well your phone is ringing why don't you just answer it maybe that's Heidi and he gonna make you feel better 
No, this is a whole nother damn inmate calling y'all. He had the nerve to be calling with an attitude like I wish somebody would call me and ask me where the hell I'm at and tell me I was supposed to be putting something on their damn books. This is apparently BB, boyfriend number two. So he was like, what's up? I thought you was going to put bread on my books. What happened? She was like, oh, I'm going to do it today. Meantime, her friend looking at her like she got three damn heads. So she's like, he said, what you doing? She said, oh, nothing. I'm just out shopping. He said, shopping. She was like, yeah, I'm just getting some house stuff. In the meantime, her friend is literally going. So he was like, you know, I really appreciate you and I love you. And he was like, he going to handle some shit real quick. I said, what shit you handling and you in jail? So she's like, oh, bye, love or whatever. Tell him, okay, and hang up. So when she hang up, she see how her friend looking at her and she's like, oh, that's just another friend. So she's like, girl, maybe that's why you crying. You really don't want to do this. You know, you don't have to do this. Right. And she's saying, no, she's not crying because of that. She just want everything to be perfect. She want to look good in the dress and so on and so forth. So her friend is like, OK, you know, just try on the next dress. And Brittany is basically saying that. I've never seen her have a reaction like this before, okay? I've never seen her cry like this before. She was like, that tells me that she's having second thoughts. That ain't no damn, you know, crying because you happy. Those aren't happy tears. Those are regret tears. So she was like, I guess, you know what I'm saying, time will tell because something ain't right here, okay? Something is not smelling right in the milk. So here she come out with the next dress. Now, the next dress did look pretty, okay? It did. She was like, I like it. And Brittany was singing, she like it too. And she was like, girl, are you still crying? Like, what's happening over here? You really seeming like you're emotional. She was like, you know, do you want the dress? Do you not want the dress? Or is it just because that you really are not ready to get married in the next 30 days? She's saying, no, me and him is going to be husband and wife. Regardless, I'm happy with him. I want him. You know, don't water us down. Don't tear us down. She's basically saying, I'm happy. He's happy. We happy. You happy. They happy. You know what I'm saying? All around the world, we happy. So she going to talk about it's heartbreaking that so many friends don't understand her relationship. And this is what makes her decision, you know what I'm saying, more hurtful that she does not have the people there that supports her in the way that she feels like she needed. She's like, it's happening now. I deserve this and I waited so long for it. And, you know, we are finally making this come true. Now, meanwhile, mind you. How you still got another freaking five years to go in damn jail, child? I wish I would be sitting here planning a daggone wedding with somebody that ain't coming home no time soon. You know, and even when she is talking with another friend, he basically giving her, you know, negative negativity according to her as well. Where she feels like everybody is mad at her. Nobody's agreeing with her. You know, nobody sees it through her eyes and knows what she wants and all of that kind of stuff. No, we not going to see it, Ty. We not gonna see a girl okay but apparently you do and so then she gets a call from michelle who is i guess her cousin and she's telling her come to the studio she want to talk to her now when she gets there she's excited at first she like oh girl what's the song you working on this sound good yeah i see you've been getting it in and you look good and you know ba 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 making a small talk or whatever then immediately shows her the ring look what Heidi gave me we engaged she like wait a minute girl so i gotta tell you something okay we gotta talk because she's like he called me the other day and we was just chit chatting talking about music or whatever have you and he told me he was engaged honey but he sure enough didn't say your name okay the name that came up was boston and so Todd huh, saying he didn't know her that that's his cousin her cousin rather but i'm saying huh how is he calling her confiding in her with something like that but don't know that that's your cousin like are y'all pulling my leg right now and then gonna talk about some you know oh he didn't know so loose links you know loose lips sink shit so now she's talking about she gonna do some investigating because his cousin was the one that bought her the ring and she's gonna get down to the bottom of it and she was like i guess his mother basically just gave birth to him to say you know go ahead and get over on time and make her look stupid and use and abuse her okay that is what he came out his mother his mother's coochie to specifically do <laughs> and so you know, she's basically like, oh, he played with the wrong one and all this other stuff in there. She's going to have to do some investigating. And her cousin Michelle is basically saying, I know my cousin, okay, and this is not going to end well. She was like, at the end of the day, he knows that he could get over. He knows the woman that he could do this to and that he could sit there and play and that they would just, you know, pretty much just take it and eat whatever he going to give them. And if the person knows that, 
you know, that's what they're going to do. Then they're going to sit there and run with it for as long as they can, and with which that is true. So we shall see, you know what I'm saying, what's going to hap happen with um Ty and her investigation, okay? Now, moving on along from them, we get Chelsea and Mickey. I actually feel kind of bad for Chelsea, child, because she's upset. She's late for work. She's trying to rush in here. First, her co-worker kind of giving her attitude, like, yo, girl, what are you doing? I already finished one room. Come on, we got another room to do. Let's get it. So when they get in the other room, she's like, what happened? Why are you late? Like, what was going on? And Chelsea starts to say that she got this text supposedly from Mikey's sister, which I think is the same one that had hooked them up you know, to begin with, saying that he had a mini stroke. And she like, what? She was like, um, okay, when did this happen? What do you mean mini stroke? And where is he supposed to be now? And she's like, she's going to show her the text and all of that. So she brings out her phone and she starts telling her. And I'm like, well, of course that would get her upset, right? And it's dangerous for you to even be driving when you upset like that. And so she trying to focus on work. But of course, if you hearing something like this and you don't know what's going on, you're going to be worried. You know, she over here talking about he was rushed to a hospital, but supposedly they got a bad, you know, damn connection or whatever the case may be. And she can't get to no pay phone or nothing like that right now. So she literally has no answer and no way of knowing what's going on with him. And her co-worker is saying, that sounds weird to me. I don't believe that. That really sounds like some bull-ish to me, okay? And I don't believe it. I'm not buying it for one minute. Like, sell your damn bridge somewhere else, okay? So I said, oop, and you know. And she's getting offended that her friends is feeling that way. And she's actually saying that, you know, she never really believed that he was real from the beginning. She actually think that, you know, he was catfishing her and that it's all fake. So I said, girl, I don't know, child, but I guess we're going to find out, you know, whether Mickey actually is in the damn hospital or not. So now moving on from there, child, we get, um... Dustin and Jessica, I think it was. Child, she took the cake from me. Jessica was a nurse, okay? And Jessica decided that she was going to quit her job that she has been doing, <coughs> excuse me, for over 13 years, up and quit it because she wanted to see if this relationship could work with Justin. Justin is about 16 years behind her in age, okay? And she said that she decided because she actually meets up with her friend Jessica at the beach. You know, they sitting back on their beach chairs, drinking their drink. And she said she's pretty much like a frat boy with tits. OK, and pretty much if you told her not to do something, she's going to be that person that will go and do it because you told her not to do it. I said, hmm, girl. But they definitely seem to be very self-aware. That's one thing I give these girls It's not all women. They don't act like. They don't know what they doing is a bad thing, okay? They do know. And so she talks about how she worked at this correctional facility for 13 years. And she basically was like, you know, her friend was saying to her, like, we worked with these people. I mean, they over here talking about murderers and everything because she was saying how they had to break up this fight one time. And how, you know, this guy had called her a bitch. And she was like, oh, yeah, the one that called you a bitch is still there. And she's like, well, I'm lucky he didn't do more than that because I think he had committed like seven seven murders I said seven murders and she basically was saying how you know maybe she should have been watching how she was talking to him and so her friend was saying with us having the background and working with these people we know how they are like do you really think that he's gonna get out and he's not gonna reoffend? are you really sure about what you're doing and she's saying yes she is so her friend was like let's be honest here and she was like oh is that what we doing we being honest she was like yeah she was like your love life have not been the best and then we start to get a background on her where she was saying she was in her first marriage for 15 years and it basically was crap and she was in the second one for nine months and then he ended up sleeping with a mutual friend so she says she never dated anybody you know that was an inmate before and she didn't even know if he would be attracted to her or want her or whatever but she shot her shot and apparently you know what i'm saying he was 
so basically she ended up resigning to see if she could have this relationship with him and they've been together for about five months but mind you she gonna talk about you know the doc must hate her they got something personal against her because they keep hating and blocking them for being able to have visitation they've been denying it ever since she's been putting in to visit him in jail y'all see my face right okay so now she talking about, you know, he's been put in the box. So he literally, I think, only comes out for like an hour and he's in the box for 23 hours. And before he went in the box, you know, he had basically said, oh, I want to get married. Let's get married. OK, I guess in his damn run DMC voice, child. OK, the remix. And he was like, you know, you're going to have my last name. So she said she wasn't expecting that. And her friend was like, well, what are you thinking? She was like, I'm thinking, hell yeah, okay, I'm going to do it. So her friend basically was very sarcastic like I would have been, okay. She was me. I was her. She was like, oh, yeah, let's totally do that. That's a great idea, okay. And so she was like, you haven't been living together you haven't been, you know what I'm saying, talking on a regular basis. You haven't even been able to know what a relationship with him would be like. And you haven't even had sex with him. So how the hell are you going to marry him? But the cherry on the top for me was she was like, and you got kids. I said, wait a minute, she got kids. How many kids we talking about? Where's the kids at? How old are they? Because it's one thing when you are a single woman, which it looks like the majority of, of them up here are. Besides, I think the only one I seen that had a child, unless I'm a mistaken was um chelsea which she had the teenage son why are y'all getting involved with these people and bringing them around your damn kids i do not like that yo if you are single and you want to do what you want to do as an adult that's one thing but for you to sit here and have them come around kids that's a no for me okay so then nonetheless i digress as we move on she go ahead you know, over to this jewelry store with her friend and she telling her, you know, this is a fairy tale except that the prince is in jail. The prince is locked up. I said, girl, you don't even sound right. OK, and they laughing about that. They go in the store and here we go with another one that won black. She won a black ring because she said ain't nothing traditional about her. So she also ends up as she's talking and telling the guy because he was like, do you know your ring size? She over here talking about some. No, I don't know the ring size or whatever, but I do have a paper clip. He like, OK, you know, what I'm saying give it to me or whatever. He ain't going to complain either way. He making his money and. You know, she basically was like, this was unexpected. You know, I didn't know this was going to happen. He's showing her a couple of different ones, a couple of different styles. She like, I think I would like that. And her friend is basically telling her like, yo, are you sure about this? Are you sure you're making the right decision? Are you sure you're going in the right direction? Anything could change at any time. I think you're moving too fast. I think you're doing too much. Why does it have to be this way? You know, and things of that nature. And, you know, once she picks the ring that she feels like she wants to go with, she basically ends up picking up her shirt and showing the damn, you know, guy in the jewelry store and all of us that she have a big ass tattoo that covers her whole stomach, okay, that says his last name because she thought that that was going to be enough and that was going to let him know how much that she really wanted him or whatever right and she never expected him to bring up marriage so he was like whoa yeah you really dedicated and he was like well I guess he surprised you and like when you know you know type of thing like I said this man want to make his damn money okay he don't give a damn either way and they start going into how you know she had been there with her through her first marriages and seen all her marriages and he was like well how many did you have and she was like two so of course this would be the third one and he was like well you try try you know and try again okay that is what they say so I said girl if you say so you know she talking about how excited and how happy she be when she you know hear his voice and all this other stuff so then she goes out to eat and, you know, talk with her daughter and she's basically letting her daughter know, like her daughter was asking all the right questions. She was like, OK, is he going to be on parole? You know, oh, no. Once he's out, he's out. You know, how do you know he's not going to get into anything else? Where are you going to be living at? What's the plans? What is he going to be doing when he come home? Why she says she was picking up and moving, I think it was to Tennessee, closer to his damn family. The daughter was like, OK, when was this? When was you going to tell me? OK, and who the heck are you going with? You going by yourself oh no i figured you could go with me because you be homeschooling
school in any way. So therefore, you know, you could pretty much homeschool anywhere. She was like, yeah, but how do you make plans like that and not talk to me and tell me about it? I am supposed to be graduating, you know, in August. I hear you saying a whole lot about his family and his support system. Well, what about your family and your support system? Like, we don't count. She's like, oh, well, let's be real. Who's really my support system that I have? She, I think, said her mom and her sister or whatever. And she's like, oh, well, you know, I haven't been talking to them in a long time anyway. She was like, so you don't have no intentions on, you know, men in that relationship? Oh, no, I'm done with them. That's over. And then she proceeds to start telling us how her sister basically had looked into him. She said he, she went all the way back to when he was first born. That part didn't make me laugh, right? And that she was pulling up all the different things that he had did and throwing them in her face or whatever to let her know about it. And she said she used to actually be real close with them and that the sister had lived across the street from her mother. But ever since this happened, she basically keeps her distance from them. I said, so everybody up here so far is running from people that tell them the truth. If you tell them the truth, they don't want to hear it. They mad at it. But her daughter was telling her, like, listen, because she was like, well, I would like you to come with me. And how about you meet his family? The daughter said, forget about me and his family. I want to meet him. I want to know what the heck he's about, because if he ain't coming correct, OK, if I smell anything funny, if I don't like the way he's talking to you, if he's trying to change anything, if he's trying to get in between us, it's going to be a problem. I'm not with that because she said, oh, well, you know, he knows what a close relationship I have with you. And the daughter basically was like, and he better damn know, okay, because I will set his behind straight. So I said, I know that's right. To me, the daughter seemed like, you know, she got more sense than the damn parent. Like she would be the parent and the mama would be the damn child. Okay. So I said, Lord, what the hell is going on here, y'all? What the hell is going on here? Okay. Now moving on from them, you know, child. We meet Mark and uh, Sincera, Sincera, what's her name? Now, child, he start to talk about, you know, he over here looking for a shirt at his damn mama house. I mean, his mama house, give me mine, at his friend house. His friend name is Jeremy, Jeremy, right? Apparently, he's known him for two years, and Jeremy has a background where he was locked up for a decade and a half, okay? So, he feels like he would know a little bit of the perspective of what it would be like dating somebody that was in jail because he was in jail. And he also apparently has way better clothes than what he does. So he's over here trying to get a top for him that he could put on for this video call that he's supposed to be doing with Sincera. Okay. And so as he is looking for the top, he is basically saying how he works at least 10 different jobs. Okay. He's pretty much a chameleon. He has multiple jobs throughout his lives. He's helped produce music festivals. He's been an engineer. You know, he fits a 10 pound bag and a five pound bag. All right. And so he's trying to get this info from Jeremy on what she would be like, what she would be thinking, what she would be going through as somebody that's locked up since he has been locked up. Right. And he talks about, you know, he's dating several prison chicks right now. It's not just her. Right. And he makes about six hundred thousand, you know, a year, even though he doesn't look like it. I said, I'm glad, you know, you don't. OK, but he says it's easier to send chicks money in jail or whatever the case may be to actually go on a date. I said, huh? OK, so according to him, he could spend about two to three hundred dollars on a meal, whereas if he sends somebody fifty dollars in jail, they make that shit stretch for the week. OK. And so he basically was saying that he tried several different sites and nobody would take a bite. Nobody would be interested. You know, the DMs was empty. Nothing was going on. He was hearing crickets, basically. And so people that's in jail, of course, ain't got nothing else to do. So if you start trying to hit them up, sure, they're going to be like, OK, you know, he said he can't get those influencer and model types and all of that kind of stuff. So basically, his friend was letting him know, like, well, for one, when a person is locked up, they're looking at every, you know, encounter, every word. They trying to prepare themselves. They looking forward to those calls. They looking forward to the video things, because when you in prison, you pretty much ain't got nothing else to do and nothing else going on. So the whole thing comes to when you finally get to reach out. And what frame of mind you going to be for that next couple hours and next couple days and things of that nature. So he basically, you know, starts telling us that he actually has a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet job 
for the different chicks that he's talking to so that he doesn't lose track and doesn't make a mistake. I said, how many people are we talking about? Well, you need a damn spreadsheet. But she just so happens to be one of the first ones that he started talking to, okay? And she's in there for a damn you know, violent crime or whatever the case may be, right? And he's saying, you know, I went into it, but hey, you know what I'm saying? I guess if that's what <laughs> she did and she's in there paying, you know what I'm saying, the time for it, then, you know, that's what it is. And she's actually doing 11 years for it. So he basically was like, you know, that kind of turns him on and, you know, maybe she's the yin to his yang. I said, what the hell am I watching, y'all? What the well, hell am I watching? And did I see him say something about that this girl shot up his grandmother's house or shot her, her grandmother in her house? I need answers, y'all. I need them answers, okay? He, she was like, I think he said she shot up the grandmother's house. Not the grandmother, but she got 11 years for it. I don't know, child. But apparently this turned him on, Okay. So basically, you know, they finally get on the video call and she has some makeup on her eyes that he noticed immediately. He like, damn, you look better than I was expecting you to. And you got makeup on your eyes. Is that purple? Oh, purple is my favorite color. And where did you get makeup from? You know what I'm saying? And she talking about how she wake up like 630 in the morning to be ready, you know, at 830 or whatever the case may be. So he was just asking her as quickly as he could because it's not like they on the phone for a long time. You know, what is her expectations? What do she want to do? What is her plans? Where do she see a relationship going? And she was saying she want to leave her past behind. She want to leave her toxic family behind. You know, she want to start over new, look to the future, whatever the case may be. And, you know, pretty much when it comes to relationships, it's just kind of like seeing where it flows and where it goes. Okay. She ain't really trying to like set no specific things or whatever the case may be when it comes to that right and she's saying she really like him he really seems you know cool so far and stuff like that when the friend is asking questions now mind you they get cut off the video call quick and she's calling him like two seconds later i said wait where's all these people getting these phones and different stuff well y'all got better connections than i do okay and so when she calls him on the phone after it after the video cut off He's basically like, oh, you sound like trouble and that turns me on. And, you know, oh, is it going to be that we, um, you know, cause each other hell or we going to be partying and be good together in hell? Something along them lines. I'm paraphrasing, right? And he's literally talking to her and talking to his friend at the same time because his friend is in the background trying to ask questions too. And he's like, yeah, so why not continue our conversation on the phone? And he's literally telling on himself like, you know, that's what's up. I'm so glad I was able to have that video call with you because when I be doing internet dating and Facebook dating and stuff, they always act like they too shy to get on video and like they don't want to see me. And she's like, well, that's stupid because I don't care how shy I am. I'm going to want to get up there and see what this person looks like that i'm dating so he going she's the one she's definitely the one and he's like uh do you have her on mute he's like no i'm trying to find the button i say yo he's stupid as i don't know what then he gonna be like oh i'm just kidding you know but he talking about she fiery she passionate he can hear the danger in her voice and the trouble is turning him on and all of this and his friend is over here talking about yo jamie and germ he's saying you know oh he was questioning it on this call he was doing what needed to be done and saying what needed to be said i said he was like if that's what you call damn crushing it child i hate to say you see what messing it up is now we get y'all to melissa and louis melissa 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 girl Girl, let it go, let it flow, let it go, let it flow, let it go, let it flow. Girl, you stuck in high school. How old are you? Melissa over here outside the high school giving us a damn tour, talking about, yeah, this was the high school. This is where it went down. This is where we fell in love. This is where he took my heart, and I just... <laughs> Didn't know what to do. Louie, 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 Okay. I know I wish I could go back into time. This is the high school behind us. I can't believe we're here. I'm so excited. You know, you could see the staircase where we used to hang out and where we used to stand. And, you know, we would walk by like a hundred times a day and look each other in the eye. You know, Louie would look at us and I would be happy for the rest of the day. Girl. 
So then she begins to walk and was basically like, you know, I'm going to show y'all where the junior drive is, okay? Because where the junior drive was, was where we would go and when we would drive, where the juniors had to park at any given moment and make out. This is where people hooked up at, you know what I mean? Now, Louis would get out and drive over there to junior drive. I don't know. He had his own car and it wasn't with me. It was with somebody else. So one day, okay, one day in her dreams, they are going to definitely come back together and they are either going to make out back there or they're going to do it back there in the car. You know what I'm saying? That's one more spot they going to have. Please somebody get Melissa some help. Seriously. So she go ahead and drive from there. I said, whose house is this, Melissa? Oh, this is Louie's house. Oh, for real? No, this is Louie's house that he used to live at when he was in high school. And this is where the magic happened. But it didn't happen with me. It happened with somebody else. When, you know, and Louie was able to enjoy it. And then he calls her and she he's like, where you at? Oh, I'm at your old house that you used to live at. And we think this is OK. We think this is normal. We think this is what people do. She said, you know, let me take a picture and send it to you. So he was like, you know what you should do? I said, no, what should she do? She said, no, what should I do? He says, call my mother and tell her that you were at my house from 20 years ago. She would get a kick out of that. She would like that. She said, really? You think so? I think that's, you know, a little crazy. That would be nerve wracking. I'm scared to call her because I know I heard about his mama and she don't play. She very strict. And then he's like, no, do it for real. You know, oh, I love you. I love you. I'm going to see you soon, Bob, whatever. So she was like, oh, that's so scary. I don't know. I heard stories about his mom. His mom got a reputation and she could be very intimidating. She doesn't like most of his girlfriends. So I don't know if I should do it, but she does it. Okay. And so she calling his mom and his mother answers. Hello. You know, hi, this is Melissa. Louie's girlfriend. She said, who? Louie's girlfriend. Who? Melissa. Louie's girlfriend. Who? Melissa. He, um, Louie's girlfriend. He gave me your number. I hope you don't mind. And his mother's like, oh, gosh. She's like, you won't believe where I am right now. She was like, where? She tells her the address. Why the hell are you at my old house? What the hell is wrong with you, girl? Oh, I just wanted to see where Louis used to live, okay? You know where Louis lived in high school, and he suggested that I give you a call. And because he wants me to come visit Georgia, and I thought when I go to Georgia to see him, then I could come by and I could see you, and me and you would be able to go out and have some dinner or something, you know what I mean, and meet up and get to know each other and hang out. And his mother was like, I don't know about all of that. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Did my son warn you about me? Because I don't play that shit. Okay. She didn't say that. I'm saying that. But y'all get it. She was like this older, you know, Italian lady that I am. And she told her, oh, he definitely told me. You know what I'm saying? She said, well, when do you think you're going to be in Georgia? She was like, I don't know. But as soon as possible, I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? I really hope that you'll be happy to meet me and that you'll give us your blessing. His mother was like, yeah, well, I got to see about that because otherwise you'll be on the shit list. OK, you'll be right up out of here. So we, we shall see. So, you know, Melissa's like, oh, OK. So Melissa go see her friends. And I love Melissa friends, baby. Okay, because one thing they going to do is they going to keep it real. All right. And so she goes to meet them and she's also telling them about how she supposed to take this trip. And they say, girl, how you taking this trip? How you getting there? Where you getting the money from? Because you ain't been having no damn money. You're broke and you're working two damn jobs. Okay, so I'm confused. Where's this money, you know what I'm saying, coming from for you to go see him? Oh, well, he said he was going to work something out. And they said, how the hell is he going to do that when he's locked up? Okay, I'm confused. No, y'all keep saying he's locked up. Technically, he's not locked up. He's basically in this facility that he had to go to you know and so he could get himself together and he's working on some things and he actually wants to be better and wants to do better and wants to work on being better you guys need to just give him a damn chance and they're telling her you's coming off real desperate for damn love with somebody that spent 10 years in prison like what are you thinking i'm confused you know you think he really gonna come out a great guy and she's like yeah absolutely he is they was like nah that's definitely not gonna happen she's like louis wants to fix himself he says what he wants this is what he he says they tell her well that's prison talk she like no it's not prison talk it's what he wants to do i don't understand why this is so hard for y'all to comprehend it's what he wants 
Nobody's making him say that. He says it on his own. He says that's what he's going to do. They was basically like, of course, that's what he's going to say while he in jail. So, of course, like I said, when she started talking about visiting him, they was like, girl, how? Where you getting the money? Oh, he said he's going to figure it out. They was like, well, what is he going to do? How was he going to figure it out? She was like, he's going to help me get there. They was like, how the hell is that even possible? You know, and she was like, I'm not desperate. She was like, you know, I work two jobs. I'm a mail carrier, work for the post office or whatever the case may be. And I work at a restaurant. And she said, I'm already trying to like, you know, save up or whatever the case may be and earn some money for when Louie gets out. And she said, I told you guys, you know, a hundred times that this was not a jail he was staying in, but a facility that transitional center, okay, that he can transition in and come out and be ready for the real world. That is what it is. So she was like, well, what if he come out and he disappears? Then what? She was like, well, if he does do that, then obviously I'm not going to be chasing behind him. I would just go ahead and let him go. They was like, no, you're not. You're going to do what you always do because you every you always stay with losers. I said, well, damn, every guy you ever had is a loser. It's, it's the same shit. Like, you're almost 40. You keep chasing after losers. You keep chasing around drug addicts. You know what I'm saying? They said everybody she has has been damn trash. She always want to fix somebody. You know, she thinks she mixed fixes and you can't fix things that's wrong with people they was like louis a lost cause girl okay you're not gonna fix him so forget it they was like melissa got a pattern going on here she likes to try to fix people and she thinks that she's gonna be able to fix louis and put him on the right track but it's gonna blow up in her face like it always does it's not gonna work and so she was like you know no i'm not gonna do that and she was like then why the hell don't you just go to georgia you know screw him or whatever and then go home and be like f him because at the end of the day you could say oh well i f louis from high school and call it a day you ain't gotta have a relationship with him and go on with your life you know she was like all the guys she dated basically she would support them they wouldn't work they wouldn't be about shit she said don't get me wrong this the first time she dated somebody in jail so obviously she going from bad to worse. They was like, this relationship is not going to work. This is definitely not going to be a relationship. You know, her sister basically told her like, girl, you wasting your time. He's not going to change. He's never going to change. And that's what it is. I said, well, damn, you can't get no clearer than that. Okay, Miss Sis and Miss Friend broke it down. And I was like, I'm here for it. But you know damn well that Melissa is not paying y'all no damn mind. She going to go and she going to her, live her dreams, honey. The way she see fit to live, <laughs> live them. But you guys, you know, you tell me what you thought about this episode, honey. If I left anything, I'll put it in the comments. You know, tell me what you think about these people. <sighs> Have you ever seen anything like this before in your life, child? Okay. Like, comment, share, describe. <laughs> Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you are so inclined. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. All right, y'all. Till next time. Tulu.